What's a story, amigos? This is Kino with some cool stories for today's story time. In our first story, Margarita tries to be friendly. Three girls hurried in to mail some postcards. Hi, said Margarita. Then Laura Dern reads the story of Ben. Between two rocks, Ben finds the lamb. Small and lost, but not afraid. And in our last story, Amber's new friend teaches her how to read. Learning to read was like walking up a wall, and Amber kept rolling off. These marks are like the chicken tracks in our yard, she moaned. Major funding for story time is made possible by a grant from Helen and Peter Bing, so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Additional funding is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. And by the annual financial support from viewers like you. Kino? Oh, it's starting to look good. <laughs> I just need a little more blue here. Like that. Ah, and a little more green. Yeah, and some yellow right there. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it feels good to paint, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it sure does. Almost as good as reading stories. Oh, I'm going to see if we have any mail. Okay. This is going to be my best painting ever. <laughs> finger painting, finger painting, sure feels good. Finger painting, finger painting, sure feels good. A little purple here, a little yellow there. Feels like reading stories like I knew it would. Oh, finger painting, finger painting, sure feels good. Wow. <laughs> Kino, look who I found outside when I went for the mail. Oh, hey. How's it going, William? Okay. And there's a letter for you. Wow, really? For me? Mm -hmm. Whoops. <laughs> Gee, you better read it. My finger roonies are uh, sort of full of paint. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see. It says, Hi, Kino. I'm six years old, and my mom is helping me with this letter for you. That's a picture of me with my little sister, Annie. We also like stories. Please read a book for Annie's birthday. She will be three years old tomorrow. Your friend, Tony. P.S. Can you write me a letter? Oh, hey, that's really cool. Well, sure, I'll write Tony a letter. And will you read Annie a book? Oh, what do you think, William? I think you should. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to. Oh, hey, Lucy. Remember that book about the little girl who goes to the post office with her mom, huh? Oh, yeah. You want to read that one? Yeah. Um, what did I do with it? Well, tell you what. William and I will go look for it while you clean up. Oh. And... Yeah, thanks. We'll meet you over at the story <laughs> couch. Okay. I'll clean up really, 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 really well. <laughs> oh, brother. This stuff's all over me. Ah, let's see, where did I leave that book? Oh, here it is. Come on. Oh, that book will be perfect because it's about Margarita and she's about the same age as Tony's sister, Annie. I hope she likes it. Okay, this story is called Hi. It's by Ann Herbert Scott and the pictures are by Glow Colson. Why don't we make this a team effort, okay? I'll hold the book, William can turn the pages, and Kino will read. Okay with you, William? Yep. Yeah, okay. Ahem. Margarita and her mother wrapped a present for Margarita's grandmother and took it to the post office to mail. They opened the big post office door and found a long line of people. 
waved Margarita. But nobody waved back. Nobody even noticed Margarita was there. After a while, the post office door swung open. In came an old man reading the newspaper. Hi, called Margarita. But the old man didn't notice Margarita. He was too busy reading his newspaper. The door swung open again. Three girls hurried in to mail some postcards. Hi, said Margarita. But the girls didn't hear Margarita. They were too busy talking with each other. After a while, the door swung open again. In came a mother carrying a crying baby. Hi, said Margarita. But the mother didn't see Margarita. She was too busy taking care of her baby. The door swung open for a boy with a tall pile of packages. Hi, said Margarita, but not quite as loud as before. But all the boy could see were his packages. At last, Margarita and her mother came to the front of the line. Margarita's mother lifted her up so she could give her package to the post office lady. Hi, whispered Margarita. Hi, answered the lady, smiling right at her. Margarita and her mother turned to go home. Bye, said the post office lady with a big wave. Bye, answered Margarita, waving back. And bye, 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 she called all the way to the post office door. Oh, the end. <laughs> yeah, that was good, huh? Hi. 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 Are we too hi, late Ashley. for the story reading? Oh, hi, Laura. Hey. Uh, hi, Ashley. Uh, no way. You're not late. <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, Kino just finished reading a story, but we can read more. Oh, great. And what was the story about that Kino read? Oh, it, it was in a post office. Uh-huh. And what happened? William, why don't you tell her? Well, it was about this little girl. She kept on saying hi to everybody, but nobody kind of noticed her. And then when she gave the box to the post office lady, she noticed her and just said, and just said hi. And then she was kind of happy. Oh, yeah. nice. I, I think it was about how sometimes grown-ups, they, they forget to be friendly to a little kid. That's uh -huh. what happened to Margarita in the story. But the lady in the post office noticed her, right? All right, right. I picked that book for Annie. See, her brother Tony sent me a letter. Really? You got a letter? Oh, yeah. I love to get letters. That's so great. Don't you love to get letters? Yeah. Huh? Do you? <laughs> yes. I'm going to write a letter to Tony. Oh, that's good. You know, when I get a letter, I open the envelope, and it feels like a little part of me travels back to the place that the letter came from. Well, books can do that, too, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For example, this is a book about a boy who lives in the country. And then there are some children, right, who live in the city. And when we read the story, we can feel the wide open space of the country, just as if we were there. <laughs> wow, I want to see this. OK. This is The Shepherd Boy by Christine L. Franklin, illustrated by Jill Kastner. All right. Should we read Here it? we go. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Read it. In the great Southwest lives a boy named Ben who cares for his father's sheep. Each day in the summer, when school is out, when the rains bless the ground, when father digs in the garden and mother weaves in the shade, Ben leads the sheep to a place where green grass grows. White Eye and No Tail help Ben keep the sheep from straying. When the sun comes up, they go together, over the rocks, up the wash, a boy 
two dogs and 50 sheep. Across the mesa, through a canyon, they travel to a secret spring, the place where green grass grows. Each day, as the sun slides down the empty sky, Ben returns to his home, to his Hogan, a good place to be when coyote barks and the night birds scream. Ben counts the sheep in the old way, the way his father taught him. One, two, three. Ta alai naki ta. Four, five. Di ashla. But one day, all 50 sheep do not come home. One ewe lamb is lost. 49 sheep are safe for the night, safe from coyote. But one ewe lamb is out alone, alone to face the cunning one. Down, down slips the sun. Now, Ben and his helpers must run to the place where green grass grows. Over the rocks they scramble, up the wash they fly. Across the mesa they run with hearts that beat like drums until at last they come to the canyon where the old ones lived and painted pictures on smooth stone walls. Beneath the houses, crumbling with time, beside the spring, between two rocks, Ben finds the lamb, small and lost, but not afraid for she knows the voice of the shepherd boy. Ben holds the lamb. He carries her gently away from the houses, past the paintings, out of the canyon, across the mesa, down the wash, over the rocks, home to his Hogan. A good place to be when coyote barks and the night birds scream. The end. Oh, wow. I could see myself with the shepherd boy walking across the canyon, down the wash, over the rocks. Oh, that's a beautiful story, Laura. Oh, yes, good. Yes, it was a good story. I liked it when Ben saved the lamb. H have you ever helped a little animal or a, or a little bug even? A gopher, gopher in my grass. A gopher? You do. Does a gopher live outside your house? Yeah. Yeah, and you can see him? He's under it. He's under oh, your he's house. He's under the ground. <laughs> oh, he's under the grass. Oh. Yeah. You, know, you know, Ben lives in such a beautiful place. If you could go and visit him, the shepherd boy, oh. what would you like him to show you? The sheep. Yeah, he had 50 of those. Huh? What else? Uh, the coyote. And who was taking care of the sheep with Ben? His two little sheep dogs. His little sheep oh, dogs. Oh, yeah. yeah. So then, books can take you places, right? Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah, and, it sure and, is. And it can show you the lives of people very different from you and I. And, and what do you need to be able to enjoy books and letters. Oh, I know, I know. A couch. No. Uh, an easy chair. No. A hard chair with a soft pillow. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is hard. Hmm. Should I give you a hint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's have a hint. Okay. In order to enjoy books and letters, you have to know how to... I know. Cook. 
No. Skip rope. No. Uh, finger paint. No. Uh, sing songs in Spanish. No. Swim in your underwear in a mud puddle. No. Uh, Kino. Eat a hot dog with relish and whistle at the same time. <laughs> What's the answer? Ay, ay, ay. I give up. Do you guys know? You have to, you have to know how to read. Read. <laughs> yeah. Kino. You have to know how to read. Right? That's right. It's good to know how to read, isn't it? Yeah, yeah sure is. Now, um, in this story that we're going to read, Amber lives way up in the mountains with her family, but she doesn't know how to read. And then... Well, then what? Then what? We've got to read it and find out. Let's huh? do that. <laughs> okay, let's read Amber on the Mountain by Tony Johnston, paintings by Robert Duncan. Amber lived on a mountain so high it poked through the clouds like a needle stuck in down. Trees bristled on it like porcupine quills. And the air made you giddy. It was that clear. Still, for all that soaring beauty, Amber was lonesome. For mountain people live scattered far from one another. Once, a man came on horseback to teach the people to read and write. Oh, how Amber longed to read and write. Books would be good company. But mountain life was too hard for the man. He left his supplies behind and skedaddled before the winter came. One day, another man came with a crew to build a road. His wife and daughter, Anna, came, too. Amber's granny, Cotton, told the man straight out, You can't build a road here. Folks will roll clean off it like walking up a wall. But the man <laughs> said, You can do almost anything you fix your mind on. And he fixed his mind on building that road. Now Amber had seen Anna with her family, inching their way up the mountain. She wanted to be friends. But Amber was shy. I will say hey to her when the time is right, Amber thought. Meanwhile, she watched Anna, biding her time. One day, Amber was watching. Anna lay flopped on her stomach in a meadow, reading a book. The sky was streaked with morning. The air was warm, the grass hummed with bees. Suddenly, up jumped Anna, shouting, What's upon a time? And hopping around crazy as a doodle bug. <laughs> Amber decided the time was right to say, Hey. Hey, she called. Are you crazy? <laughs> sure, Anna called back. Crazy with spring. Hey, yourself. What are you shouting? Asked Amber. A story from my book about a princess spinning gold. Might I hold it? Amber asked. Sure. Amber took the book as if it were a fine and breakable cup. She examined the pages. This tells of a princess truly, she asked. Yep. Want to read it? I don't know how, Amber said. There's no school hereabouts. I forgot, said Anna. She stared at Amber. A stubborn look came into her eyes. Amber giggled. You look like our mule, Rockhead. When old Rockhead looks balkety, he's up to something, sure. Well, I am up to something, said Anna. Daddy says you can do almost anything you fix your mind on, and I've just fixed mine on teaching you to read. For real and true, cried Amber. For real and true. Anna began shouting from the book again. Amber joined in. Then they twirled through the grass, crazy as two doodlebugs. <laughs> <laughs> After that, Anna and Amber stuck to each other like burrs. When Amber did her chores, Anna helped. She learned to slop the pigs, milk the goat, and gather eggs. 
When Granny Cotton needed young eyes to help her with quilting, the girls sat on either side of her, poking little silver needles in and out, in and out. Whatever else they did, every day they practiced reading. Learning to read was like walking up a wall, and Amber kept rolling off. These marks are like the chicken tracks in our yard, she moaned. I know for a fact chickens don't write notes to each other. Are you certain sure these letters mean something? Certain sure, Anna smiled. Sometimes Amber read a few words, then she stumbled. Sometimes she forgot the words and had to start all over. She was so eager, she hurried and tangled the words like quilting thread. Drat, Amber grumbled. I plain can't do this. <laughs> you can, said Anna. Just pretend you're old Rockhead. Set your whole self to the task. Amber stiffened up, mulish as could be. Anna howled with delight. Now that is the face of a reader. And one day, <gasps> one very fine day, Amber took the book and read. And he stamped his foot through the floor and was never seen uh, again. The end. Oh, you did it, hooted Anna. You read all by yourself. I read, I read, I read. The girls marched around, stomping their feet like Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> Suddenly, Anna stopped. She stared at Amber. Just what notion have you now, Miss Rockhead? Amber asked. Now I fix my mind on teaching you to write, said wow. Anna. <laughs> but that was not to be. The road was finished. Anna and her family were going home. When the day of parting came, each gave the other a gift. Anna gave Amber her book of fairy tales. Amber gave Anna a little clay mule. Then Amber watched her friend down the mountain till she melted into blue mountain mist. Months passed. Mountain people went down the road and learned the ease of city ways. City people came up the road and learned the beauty of mountain ways. And funny thing, not one solitary soul rolled off that road. <laughs> from time to time, up on the mountain, Amber got a letter from Anna. <gasps> then she glowed with happiness. Anna's words set them side by side again. But Amber was sad, too. She missed her friend, and she could not tell her so. But one day, she got a notion. A wonderful, rock-headed notion. Attention, attention, she announced to the chickens. I've fixed my mind on learning to write. Soon I'll send Anna a letter, frilly as lace, and she'll faint right to the floor. The chickens paid no attention. Amber didn't care. She ran straight to Granny Cotton, gibbering her news out before she stopped. Granny chuckled, child, child, you're peltering me with words thick as spring rain. I feel drenched. <laughs> Granny was so pleased. She gave Amber the paper and pencils left behind by the teacher long ago. Whenever she could squeeze in time, Amber took her book and tried to copy the words. If I can read them, I can copy them she thought. Well, at first they looked squat and squashed. My letters are lopsided as a herd of one-horned cows, she groaned. Amber kept working. When it snowed and the world outside was muffled in white, she huddled under a quilt so only her hands poked out. Cold and stiff, she formed her letters. When clouds like gray geese flocked in the sky, and rain glazed the land, Amber shivered, but she kept working. Her tongue curled up to her upper lip <laughs> in concentration, like a lizard stalking a bug. 
She squeezed her pencil nearly to splinters. Her fingers hurt. Still, she kept working. And one day, one very fine day, Amber sent a letter to Anna. Dear Anna, I am a rockhead too. I fixed my mind on writing. I teach myself to write so as I can write you. I hope you faint to the floor. Love from your friend, Amber. Soon, <laughs> a letter came back. Dear Rockhead, your letter made me faint right through the floor, like you know who. It made me happy. You are not far away anymore. Love from your friend, Anna. The end. Oh, that's a great story. That was a great story. Well, I'm going to write a letter to Tony. We can all write a letter to our friends. Well, I've got the paper and pencils. Oh, but but before we get started, we really should do our story, story picks. picks. I have this book right here. It's about the mail, and it's called The Jolly Postman, and it has real letters inside it. And I'd like to recommend Dear Bear. Dear Bear. It's a story about a little girl who exchanges letters with a bear. Wow. <laughs> well, that's all for today, but I, I hope you'll come back and join us again soon. But remember, keep, keep a, a story, story in your heart. heart. Okay, let's get started on those letters. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye. <laughs> Dear Tony, I am happy that you wrote me a letter. It's good that you remember your sister's birthday. I hope that Annie liked the story that I read for her. I thought it was good. I like most stories, and I like books. Do you like pizza? I love it. I also love mango juice. Did you ever try it? It tastes kind of weird the first time you try it. Your friend, Dino. P.S. Write me another letter. Today's Storytime books are Hi by Anne Herbert Scott, illustrated by Glow Colson. The Shepherd Boy by Christine L. Franklin, illustrated by Jill Kastner. Amber on the Mountain by Tony Johnston, paintings by Robert Duncan. The Jolly Postman or Other People's Letters by Janet and Alan Allberg. And Dear Bear by Joanna Harrison. You can find these and other books at your local library. Major funding for Storytime is made possible by a grant from Helen and Peter Bing so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Additional funding is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcast and by the annual financial support from viewers like you. Storytime is a production of KCET Los Angeles.